Hey you folks and hobbyists, so here's a bit of a ramble about Hobby Linux, my new Linux development project. I guess it's not exactly new, I've been talking about it for about a month, but I'm going to ramble about my thoughts on Arch Linux and using Arch Linux as a base for my new project. Now I'd normally just switch the backend base for the project and be done with it, but I'm trying to be less flippant and have more accountability with my projects, so I'm making this video for you as part of my dev blog. Early on I said that I was going to be using Arch as the base, and now I'm not. So what happened? Is this distro hopping? No, I don't really think it is distro hopping, because this is a development project first, and I have very valid reasons to be pivoting away from Arch. But first, let me tell you about this cute little game I have in the background. It's called Ancient Mind. The marketing says, Explore a region of mystery and danger in Ancient Mind, a modern take on the classic Zelda-like top-down action adventure. Explore dungeons, fight monsters, solve puzzles, and discover the truth about ancient legends. It's a top-down explorer-adventure style game with a cute anthro character as a lead. There's actually a pair of anthros, but I'm not sure if it's going to be a big game with a big backstory or just this little cute game. But the coolest thing about it is that it's written in Godot. I found it in my YouTube feed. The developer posted a video about how they got some shaders working. So I took a peek at it, I thought it looked cool, and I went to Steam, and there's a demo. The demo seems to be the beta, but it's really fun, and you should check it out. But that's enough about Ancient Mind, let's talk about Arch. Arch Linux is a rather unique distribution of Linux. I guess maybe I'd call it a stage one or stage two Linux distribution, because with vanilla Arch, you really have to build it yourself using documentation. There is an installer built into the ISO, but it tends to be frowned upon if you announce that you use that to install your system, so I don't know. Arch Linux comes with its own package manager and some other stuff that a distro like Damn Small Linux, Linux from Scratch, or even Slackware doesn't have. And it's actually one of the issues I have with Arch. What is it? Now the purists will say that it's a DIY operating system that you build and configure yourself, but as a hobbyist, I would expect something like that to be a bit like a toolbox with instructions, but nothing stopping you from using a hammer like a screwdriver. But the weird thing is that Arch is actually quite opinionated about some things. For example, let's say you want to build a package, a new package for your system and your system only, but you want to build it as the root user as part of like a CI thing. Well, you can't. The tool that you use to build Arch packages is coded specifically to not let you run it as root. Is it a bad idea to run random stuff as root? Well, yeah, but it's my system. What if I'm running in a aforementioned CI environment or a container or something like that? Now I know a lot of people will say, well, you should never use root for anything, and that's fine. But if the argument is that users should be following proper development processes, I call nonsense on that. If it's a truly DIY operating system, upstream developers should not be enforcing rules like that on their user systems. A more extreme example would be like if the password command that you use to change a user's password didn't let you pipe text into it because that might be bad form or it might leak somebody's password. I mean, yeah, it might leak somebody's password, but they assume that the person using it knows what they're doing. My issue with this is that I don't want upstream developers telling my users how they should use their system. I don't even want to tell my users how to use their distro. I believe that it's up to the users to decide how they use their systems. Now the next salient topic would be the Arch user community itself. There's nothing that I can really say that hasn't already been said about the Arch community. It's not known for being the most welcoming, but I just want to ask why? If someone is stuck on a simple issue and you could just say, oh, run this one command, why don't you help them? Like, why, why, is, why are they so insistent on dumping on everybody? Linux isn't that hard, and honestly, installing Arch really isn't that hard. The wiki page has a tremendous amount of information, but it's really just six commands. And I think that that's part of the game, is that it really is simple, but they make it look like it's complicated. So when a user says, oh, I got stuck on fdisk, there's a chorus of people saying, oh, just go to the wiki. But the wiki page is gigantic. But when the user is just asking, what's my hard drive, and they don't understand that they need to ls the dev file system, why not just tell them that? It's in the wiki, sure, but if you could help somebody, why don't you? Not everyone's style of learning is the same, so telling literally everyone to just go read the wiki is really counterproductive. And I have to say, the Arch wiki is good, but it's not good on biblical proportions like a lot of people act like it is. Much like the whole of Arch, really, it's 
kind of inconsistent, with some pages being way overly verbose, explaining the most minute of details without mentioning that the whole process that it's talking about could be completed with a single command. But then you turn around and other pages, which you would expect to have more information, are so terse that you might as well just go to the Gentoo or Debian wiki. And I don't mean terse as in someone just needs to come in and shore up the information. I mean that it's written in a way to be terse. I feel like it's a lot of arbitrary gatekeeping, and I don't want it. And then the final issue that I'll mention as to why I'm pivoting Hobby away from Arch is the massive stability issues I've been having. On my laptop, I'm actually running Arch, but I installed it through Arch's installer, which, as I mentioned before, is typically frowned upon by seemingly a lot of people in the Arch community. And maybe I'm having stability issues because I use the installer. I don't know. So they, to be fair, they have a point. I don't know where these issues are coming from. I've been having kernel panics weekly and lately. I think last week I had one every day. I mean, I guess there is a chance that my hardware is just like randomly failing, but I ran Debian for two years on this hardware, no issues whatsoever. So I guess we'll see when I hop to the next distro base, but I am fairly confident it has nothing to do with this laptop's hardware. So that is to say, it's an arch problem, but why? I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. I'm tempted to say it's a patch or something that other distros put in as a patch because Arch's kernels and softwares are very vanilla. I've tried other kernels, LTS kernel, whatever. It's all the exact same. Well, actually, that's not true. It's not the exact same. They're kernel panics, but they come from different things every time. It's very strange. My system just feels super buggy the way that it's never felt on Ubuntu or Debian, and there's just no reason for it. I have plans in the roadmap to build a kernel for Hobby Linux, but it's way down the road and I'm not going to build a kernel to figure out what's wrong with Arch's kernels on this hardware. I just, I don't want it. I've spent enough time on these Arch related issues that it's really best for me to pivot to something that works out of the box instead of provides all of these weird issues. I wrote the installer code so that it's easy to do just that. The base distro doesn't matter all that much, I just need to change the package names. The important thing is that the Bedrock distro is independent, it's vanilla, and of course, it's maintained actively. The Linux distribution KAOS, I think that you actually say it chaos, but it's a big inspiration to me. I think it's so cool how they took Arch and turned it into something that's really unique for them and their mission. Having vanilla packages is also really important. Ubuntu and Debian patch their packages like crazy, and I don't want it. But to their credit, the patches do seem to make the systems more stable, but I just don't want packages that have strange hacks and workarounds. They're written 20 years ago, nobody knows what they do, nobody wants to remove them. I'd prefer not to perpetuate that tech debt. At the same time, I need a base distro to come with good tooling like a package manager and also be binary. So Gentoo is an interesting option, but the lack of binary is just a no-go. Now I've got my eye on another distro, but that means another two or so weeks of development, which really sucks. I think I'm going to polish up the original bash script installer that I wrote for Hobby Linux and release it as a standalone Arch installer. Someone commented in another video that that was the smallest Arch installer that they had ever seen, and I think that's pretty neat. I didn't even really write it to be small. I wrote a tool to fit my needs, but if people want to use it or use that as a base for their own script or something, heck yeah. The thing is, Arch isn't that difficult to install. There's just an order of operations and you can't mess up any one of the steps. And if you do, you basically have to go all the way back to the store or find out how to unwind the mess you made. It's fun, and honestly, I test anyone who has not installed Arch themselves to give it a try. It might seem daunting, because again, that wiki page is huge, but read between the lines and you'll see that it's actually very easy. I think Arch Linux is a really neat little project, and it has some interesting ideals, but a rather unfortunate community. I don't hate it or have any major problems with it, it's just not for me, and it's not for Hobby Linux. I hope that you liked this installment of the Hobby Linux dev blog, and if you did you want to support the development and get more content, why not subscribe or become a channel member? Channel members get videos like these about a week in advance and they contribute to the development process. I also post updates and ISOs for members in the Hobby Shop Discord server, so if you want to get involved there you should go check it out. But until the next dev blog, I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.